And hello, David. So today I would like to discuss a little bit more of becoming who you want to attract. And part of that is uh, learning to love yourself. And I've got my friend David here who has written the book, Let It Go, which I'm going to show. Love this book. Love this book. Thank you. And in this book, there's a line that says, in order to become who you are, you need to let go of who you have been. And I want to discuss that because yeah. in the dating world and seeking your true love, I guess, I believe there are many true loves in your life, but you, it's very important that you become that person that you are seeking which I've been working on. And I've also been reading the book, which has been helping me out. So every Monday, we will have what we will call Mindset Monday, and we will discuss just this and exactly how to do it. So welcome, David. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Christine. Really, really pleased to be here. Yes. So again, in order to become who you are, you need to let go of who you've been. Let's discuss mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. What are some of the ways that we can do so? And why is it so important? Okay, I think I'll answer the second question first, uh, which is, yeah, it is important because if, if there's anyone out there watching this and they, they feel they're attracting the wrong people all the time, or the wrong type, then you have to look at yourself because we, we're in, a, we're in a, a space where whatever's coming into your life is what you're allowing to come into your life and what you're, put, you're putting the energy out there. Uh, and there's physics behind this, quantum physics behind this. So we have to take responsibility of what's coming into our life and look and observe what's coming into your life. So it's so important that if you do want to change an aspect of your life, and in this case, finding a partner, finding someone to date that you like, that's different to what you've had before. Or, or if you're not attracting anything at all, then... Again, it's all about what we're putting out there in terms of energy, thoughts, in terms of how we are on a daily basis. So if we're putting out there, for example, blame, complain, annoyance, we're reacting all the time, then people are going to feed off this because the, the energy we put out there, people feed off anyway. So if you're with somebody, you know, who's really positive and upbeat, you love being around them because they... They inspire you, motivate you, but also you feel good in their company. Whereas mm -hmm. if you're with some a group of people and they for, for half an hour and all they did was blame and complain and judge, you feel ooh, you feel exhausted energetically. So it affects you at the deepest core. So I always think that number one, take responsibility. So it's really, it's us taking responsibility that we need to change first. And that's so important. Uh, not why do I keep attracting the wrong guy or why do I tra attract the wrong women? It's I need to change me first. When you change, I will say when you change, the world around you changes. And, and that's what happens to us as we, as we, as we um, grow up and as we proceed through life. And, and the, the second thing is to look at you know, who are we attracting currently and it you can even sit down with a piece of paper if you want to and write down the names of the people you've dated and you think were failures or we, you know write down their names and just look at a pattern yes a pattern. i've done that <laughs> and a pattern when you do that you'll say oh what sort of energy did they have Hmm. because then you have to then again take responsibility and say right okay this energy i put out there has ac actually attracted this energy because it's not opposites attract it's actually like attracts like energy. right you know? right so i have done that and i will say that you and i have discussed personally my stuff um, I was telling you that I keep running into my non-negotiables and I won't discuss those, but, and so you helped me have a different way of thinking in thinking of focusing more on the positive 
of what I want and what I've seen in others, other relationships, past relationships and people I'm dating. And that has attracted very different as well. So what I did is I wrote down each name of, you know, serious relationships, people that really impacted me and the positives, what they did bring into my life, what I learned from them, um, what I would like to find in someone else. And so I found that was very good for me. That was very healthy for me because all of the non-negotiables, as you told me what happened, went away. It, everybody went away. <laughs> but, you know, they, they, you're no longer attracting those people. And it wasn't a bad thing at all. It's, it's just now I'm more focused on the positive. And what I learned, what I really want, and relationships may end badly, but you can always find something good that they brought to your life. You know, we like this person for the moment, right? And we had fun with them and it was joyful. And there are things that you can find that you learned and that you enjoyed and that you want to continue to gather, if you will, right? It's like a bag. I'm gathering these good things and um, carrying it with me. So that's what I, what I've been practicing. So, um, as you were saying, like, it's like a mirror image and I've been working heavily on this. So you, what I've done is I've written a list of what I'm looking for and have to ask myself, are you these things? And part of that is letting go of past traumas, right? And letting go of your past way of thinking um, can you give us just one tool, one way of letting go of your past traumas or way of thinking about dating? I see so many negative comments on social media. Um, all men and women are the same. Dating sucks. You know, I never getting married again. I'm ne it's just negative, negative. Um, but what are some of the ways what is, what is just one tool that you can share with us to let some of that go? Mm, yeah, good question. Well, what I would um, initially start with um, is meditation uh, and actually thinking about, you know, when we go, when we overthink, for example, a lot of people mm -hmm. overthink before they go on a date, on a night out. Uh, they overthink, yeah, they could be sing single and they're going out to a bar and they're thinking, what if I meet someone? What, how do I look? And they're overthinking how they look, who they're going to meet, what's going to happen, are they standing in the right place in the bar? And these are things that we've all experienced where we, we want to be our best. And when we're overthinking, Christine, we, we don't appear to be ourselves because we're in another world of overthinking, you know? So it's clear then, right, I would say the first thing people have to do is to lock in the idea that overthinking is not going to serve me. And if this one of the things that they can learn from this session is, right, how do I stop overthinking? How do I stop? And that what you can do is to change your into 